In this video, I'll be going over the first boss in the Mythic Plus version of Halls of Infusion. I'll be going over exact mechanics and sharing tips and tricks from the perspective of a tank, healer, and DPS so that no matter what role you play, you'll be able to clear this boss on higher keys. If you guys enjoy tips and tricks like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out this content live on my Twitch channel. I'll put a link in the description below where I run Mythic Plus with the community. Now, do note, in this video, I'm only going over bosses. I did another video, link in the description below, where I go over the exact route you need to get to 100% and explain every mechanic for every trash mob, what to interrupt, what to stun, what to avoid. But for this video, let's dive right into the bosses. First boss you'll encounter in Halls of Fusion is Watcher Iridius. Now, we'll be looking very closely at my timers here. I do use big wigs for raids and little wigs for dungeons. Now, if you want access to these add-ons, head to the link in our description below to the Discord. We have a guides and resources category where I share weak auras and all recommended add-ons for season two and 10.1. First ability going off here is gonna be Titanic Fist. Now. This is a tank mechanic. It is a frontal that will stun and do damage. So tank obviously pointing the boss away, which is a good just principle for tanking as a whole. DPS and healers just don't be in front. Now, you're gonna see me get stunned here in a second, but what I've learned ever since this run is that actually this is avoidable. You can actually sidestep it. It is a very quick cast. So you gotta be fast, but even better yet, you can actually just step forward into the boss underneath his feet and you actually will avoid the whole thing. But be careful when you're walking into the boss, you wanna make sure you start moving once he's already started casting. Because once he's casted, he is fixated on that position, he's not gonna turn around. But if you walk into the boss before the cast goes off, you could force the boss to actually turn around and hit everyone else in the raid, which obviously you don't wanna do. Next ability is going to be Static Surge. Now this is pulsing unavoidable AOE damage, okay? it's going to go off four times during the cast. We saw the first tick right there. Second one goes off right there. Here is the third pulse going off and then the fourth pulse. And now the cast is over. Unavoidable damage at super high keys. This is a 17 on Tyrannicals. So that's decently high for a third week in this video, but at really, really high keys, that is probably going to truck. Might be a good time for defensive. If you are, for example, a Holy Paladin, might be a good time for a raid cooldown like Aura Mastery, things like that if you're a healer. Next ability we're gonna see here in just a second is going to be another power overload. Now, this is the first time we've seen this. I know I said another, but it's the first one. This ability is gonna pick three different people, okay? We see here it picks Deco Mode, Sly Guy, and AJ Valdez. All they need to do is run away because they are going to drop a massive pool that will hurt anyone that is in it okay so we see deco running out we see sly guy right there running out the holy paladin does stay in because he's a melee type healer okay now everyone else they bring these out to keep the arena clear now what do you do if someone in your party maybe doesn't bring theirs out whether they should have or maybe they deliberately did it because they're a melee healer well as a tank i can compensate by that you notice immediately i just start kiting the boss away from it to make the arena nice and clear for us we're going to see Static Surge again, which is going to be, again, more of that pulsing AOE damage. And you can see it's hitting pretty hard. So defensives are going out. And this is going to be a rinse and repeat. There it is, tit Titanic Fist. This time, you see, I ran through the boss. And not only did I avoid the damage, I avoided the stun. And it did not hit anyone in the party. This is going to be a rinse and repeat of those mechanics. Now, the only change we're going to see is going to be during the next phase, which we'll get to in a minute. They are bringing those out for the power overload, but we see this moment right here. The boss goes to the middle of the arena. This is the intermission where he is now going to summon these little orbs and do siphon power. What he is doing is he is actually siphoning power and getting stronger every second. These orbs, if they do not die quick, all the boss is doing is empowering himself. The longer you let these orbs live, the stronger the boss is going to be going into the next phase. What you want to do is you want to group these up. You want to make sure to CC them and AOE them down as quickly as possible. And when they die, this is the tank's responsibility. You need to make sure that they die on top of the boss, because when they do that, they will knock him out of that cast where he was empowering himself, and then he will begin the next phase. This is what people don't know. Everything that happened in phase one in phase two after he empowers himself everything is going to get hard, hit harder everything will hit harder more damage but also you're going to notice one thing about the power overload so titanic fist coming out again you see i go through the boss i avoid the entire thing static surge now this is more damage 
same ability four ticks of the cast but now it's just actually doing more damage and now this is what is really important to know the power overload earlier in phase one we saw that it gave everyone it picked three people and they dropped a big circle but now that he's empowered remember everything he does is just stronger now you're going to notice them running those out because now the circles they drop are even bigger than we saw them in phase one now this is huge because you got to remember the circle that you drop while you are running out of it you're taking damage by standing in it so the bigger the circle is the more distance you have to cover in order to get out of it so you see here right now the demon hunter and, and sly guy the monk are taking massive damage so during phase two i would really recommend dps pop a defensive when you're dropping those and then healers really be on the lookout because they're going to be taking massive damage and we see that they took huge hits i tried to move a little bit closer to throw a word of glory heal on deco because he was so low i ended up getting trucked at that moment almost went down but thankfully we were able to keep almost everyone alive but following that there was a static surge which because deco was already so low unfortunately he went down we do end up getting this boss it was a little bit sweaty i think actually me and the monk were the only ones to clear it but that is pretty much all the mechanics another power overload coming here they're gonna run away huge circles on the ground but as long as everyone brings these out they're aware of the major damage points again here me trying to heal people the healer does go down and it's only at 2.96 percent eventually this hunter does go down as well we see them popping the defensives the hunter turtles and it's just going to be a dps race at this point i dodged that front door from the boss but we are just getting trucked we have no healer there's only one one percent left and now because there's only three people left normally power overload does not choose the tank but because there's only three people it does choose me because there's no other option so i'm trying to run away to make sure that this corner is going to be clean i see that my team is running to the edges here so i try to emulate what they're doing by also dropping at the edge so we can all run back in now we notice i'm trying to get back i am trying to not die from the the pulsing on the ground i'm also trying to not turn my my back to the boss because he's gonna smack me in the face i also noticed my monk is super low so i'm trying to build up holy power so that i can i lay on hands myself and i'm trying to heal the monk we actually managed to get it off and i'm healing again build that third holy power i get a clutch heal just before that tick goes off we bring him close and then thankfully me and the monk were actually able to dps him i'm trying to kite at this point and we actually finally get the boss down a tyrannical these are actually really going to hurt so be sure to be aware of where the damage comes out and be sure to aoe those ads down asap because the longer you take to kill those the harder you are going to make the the second phase b if you guys enjoy tips and tricks like this be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out this content live on twitch not only to learn but to get a chance to do the mythic plus with me and end up in some of these videos i appreciate y'all we'll catch you in the next one